Hi everyone, it's Jennifer Savari with Paper Crafting Adventures and I wanted to share a hack that I just recently discovered for how to make a frame smaller than the die. With no seams, that is the beauty of this trick. And I've known about partial die cutting. I've made frames longer in the past. This one was tricky though because it was a 5x7 die that I wanted to make into a 3x7 frame. And with the big shot, it wouldn't work because it would have been too wide. So when I've been making these tea cards and I'm making a whole bunch of them, I really wanted to avoid having to have a seam around that beautiful frame. And it still was beautiful, especially if I did little diamond inlays, but this hack that I'm about ready to show you has made it so that I can do a, a seamless frame smaller with my Big Shot. So let's get started. This is the shim that I could not find in yesterday's video. Uh, this is a, a little metal plate that just adds just a little bit more cutting power to the Big Shot on these intricate dies. And here's the problem I was having. I put my 3x7 piece down and the frame. It would have cut all the way through the end and there was no way to run this through the Big Shot unless I could make the cutting plate smaller, which my husband did. I had him take his skill saw and cut a cutting plate down in half. And what this has allowed me to do is place that on top and die cut only a portion of that die. It's as easy as running it through once, lining up the pattern, and then when you feel it kind of click into place, just simply tape it let the other side click into place and tape that and run it through again. And this results in a perfect die cut with no seams. And I'm so excited because I love to make cards that are, are a little bit narrower than the norm. And this will work on so many different frames. Now, with my little honey cards, the frame was actually cut out of the center as well. And the beauty of these dies by Paper Discovery, uh, which I'll link to that video below, but you can actually nest those frames together so that it will cut out a pure frame. And you could use the die to do this, but I'm gonna show another way that I think is faster in this case. And I'm just using my Fisker's paper trimmer and I'm lining the little wire guide up and the little uh, cutter with where I want it to cut. And it's really easy because there's a guide right there. And then you just push it down and then you can cut right along. And you know right where to stop because you can see. And I just left a small little border all the way around and continued on all four sides. And look how perfect this frame turns out. Hacking a cutting plate is revolutionary in my world today. I wanted a little bit of contrast between the front frame and the backing. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the backing frame. I could have just glued this top directly onto that backing, but I'm going to be doing a little embossed inlay and I didn't want it to be too raised up, if that makes sense. So I just went ahead and, and traced out that frame, cut it down, and then my inlay will fit inside of it. But pretend that I didn't cut that piece out and I just used that teal piece as my backing. I'm using the inlay that I previously cut out of that frame. I embossed it for a pattern and I could have just put it down on the teal. However, notice that that backing is not teal, it's ivory because I did cut the frame out. And I'm kind of glad that I did because whenever you emboss, sometimes it shrinks up the paper just a little bit. And if that had been teal, a little bit of teal may have shown through, but because it's ivory, you don't really see any little gaps of that shrinkage that happened. And the next step was just to glue this panel on. I use my tape runner so that there are no warps or bubbles. And then I usually go around the edges that my tape runner missed with that glue because I'm creating a layer and nothing's worse than a little layer that warped and then there's just air, you just see space in between the layers. And so I try really hard to make sure that that does not happen. 
And this is a cute card just how it is. I happen to have some extra little scraps sitting around and so I took a frame and I cut just along the diamonds. You can see here right in the middle of those diamonds. I don't want to cut through them. There's just enough space to create two little borders. And you can see one of the little borders left on the cutting plate of my cutter and I'll be using that for an example that I'll show at the end. But this little panel just gets glued in and I noticed after I had glued it that when I had originally cut it through the Big Shot, there was a little triangle that must have made a indent there. So I just covered it up with some of the uh, Paper Discovery flowers and I love that these can just be layered and they give dimension while still being flat. These are fabulous flowers. So it's such a fun size of card, I wanted an envelope that matched the card. But on my envelope punch board, there wasn't really a size that would fit. So I wanted to show you Crafter's Key. I'll provide a link below, but I use this all the time. Think of it as a calculator for your envelope punch board. You tell it whether it's one layer or a thick card or a box, and then you can put in your length and width of your card and it tells you the paper size to cut it and the punch point to start and it just makes it so easy and you'll see here that I actually added just a little bit to make it a perfect eight and a half cut so just following the guide of the punch point I found that punch point on the punch board and just made a envelope as usual and just so simple and easy I cut down the flaps just a little bit so that everything would close nicely and then I ran some glue along the edges and just made sure that that was sealed really well. And then one thing I usually do when I'm making cards ahead of time is I'll put a little bit of the uh, tape on top with leaving the release paper on so that when I'm ready to send something I can just remove the release paper. I put one little gem on the center of the flower and then I made a bunch more. These were so much fun and I was just so excited to find out how to make a frame smaller with no seams. And easy, super easy and fast. Um, lots of different variations with these examples. I just had fun. And I put a little stamp of a Bible verse on the inside of that one, used one of the smaller flowers from the paper discovery and another larger one for the blue. I wanted to show how I used both of those little border pieces that had been left on the cutting plate. And these were just fast, simple, and fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, and if you want to see more, click subscribe. Have a great day. See you again soon.